we were talking about the difference between financial accounting and managerial accounting and why managerial accounting might be a useful thing to know. In this section, we're going to be talking about how to use accounting information to make decisions. Managerial accounting does not use separate information from other forms of accounting. It uses data that's already available in the firm's accounting information system. It just uses that information in different ways. So managers can use accounting data to plan for the future. Now how does that work? Accounting is essentially backwards looking. That means accounting information tells us about things that have already happened. For external users of financial accounting information, they wouldn't be interested at all in what already happened except that they believe that that information has predictive value. That means knowing how the firm performed in the past will allow investors and creditors to predict how the firm might do in the future. Managers can use accounting information in the same way. They can look at how much the firm spent to accomplish various things in the past, how much revenue it generated. They can make predictions about the future, and we call that budgeting. In addition, managers can also use accounting information to make decisions. They can look at how much revenue or how much cost the firm would have if they made one option or if they made a different option and decide which option they like best. Finally, managers can use accounting information to evaluate performance. In other words, we can look at the decisions that we made in the past. We can look at how those decisions actually worked out and by comparing how we thought the future was going to be and how the future actually was, we can decide how good we were at making predictions and therefore, we hope, we can learn to be better predictors in the future. In order to do all of this, we need to understand how various costs behave. One key to that understanding is what's called a cost driver. A cost driver is the thing that we believe causes our costs to go up or down. And we're going to talk a little bit in this section about how to understand cost drivers. In addition to use cost information, we need to understand which costs are relevant. That means which costs are going to make a difference to our decision. And depending on what the decision is, we might also want to think about which revenues are relevant. In addition, we need to think about how we can use costs for control and evaluation. Control means deciding which costs a particular manager can control, and valuation means determining the extent to which the manager used those costs wisely. So, for example, Carmen has a storefront where she makes and sells cookies. She's thinking about expanding her operation so that she can sell cookies not only to individual customers but also to wholesalers or retailers. So she wants to understand her costs. For example, her rent and her insurance 
depend on the number of stores she has. So if her expansion is going to include opening a new store, then those costs are going to go up. If her expansion only includes doing more business within her existing store, then those costs aren't going to change. By contrast, labor and ingredients don't depend on the number of stores. What they depend on is the number of cookies. If you misunderstand what's causing your costs to go up, then you're not going to be as good at predicting what those costs are going to be under various conditions. So, what we need to know is what is relevant for a decision. Things that are relevant are going to be things that are different depending on what that decision is. So if that decision includes just costs, then we need to think about all the costs that are going to be different depending on whether we choose option A or we choose option B. If the decision also includes revenues that might be different, then we need to consider those too. And what we're looking for is all of the things that are going to change depending on a particular action that we're thinking about taking. So for example, let's say that Carmen is going to expand her operations. She decided not to get a new store, but she's going to make her kitchen bigger or she's going to put on a second shift so that she has more workers who are available to make more cookies. So now she has to estimate how's that going to affect her financial performance. She estimates that her revenues will increase by 35 percent, her materials and labor and utilities are going to include by 50 percent, and her other costs are going to increase by 20 percent. So the question is, should Carmen expand her business? So let's take a look at where Carmen is now. She has sales revenue based on her current level of activity and she estimated all of her costs at that level of activity. Here's her operating profit per week. What happens if she expands? Well, Carmen thinks that her sales revenue is going to go up by 35%. So that means her predicted new revenue is going to be 135% of her current revenue. That would be $8,505. She also believes that her materials are going to increase by 50%. Her labor is going to increase by 50%. and her utilities are going to increase by 50%. And she can figure those numbers out. Since she's not opening a new store, she doesn't expect her rent to change. However, she does estimate that her other costs are going to go up by 20%. Based on those estimates, she can add them up. That gives her her new predicted total cost. When she subtracts that from her sales revenue, that tells her her operating profit in the new scenario. Now, all she has to do is compare her old current operating profit to her new predicted operating profit and that tells her that her income should increase by $405 a week. This type of analysis 
where we take what is and we compare it to our predictions is called an incremental analysis. It shows us how things change. However, there is another way to do this, a slightly similar way, and that's called a differential analysis. In this analysis, we only focus on the things that will be different. So in Carmen's case, her revenue is going to go up 35%. Her materials are going to go up 50%. And her labor will go up 50%. And her utilities will go up 50%. Her rent isn't expected to change at all. That means that rent is not relevant for this particular decision. Her other costs are expected to go up 20%. Now we can add up all of the cost increases, subtract that number, from the increase in revenue, and that tells us that this alternative is going to increase her weekly income by $405. The answer is the same in either method, either the incremental method or the differential method. The only difference is how do you go about arriving at that answer. Either way, my question to you is, should Carmen expand her business? And why do you think so? Accounting will give you the numbers. It won't necessarily give you the answer, but it will give you something to think about. $105 more a week sounds very attractive, but of course Carmen needs to think about whether her estimates are accurate or not. You can't make good decisions based on faulty estimates. So let's try a practice problem. We have a company. The company currently has $12,000 of sales revenue. It currently has a total of $9,500 of operating costs, which includes $1,500 for rent. The firm is thinking about adding a new product to its product line, and it believes that this new product will increase its sales by 30% and its costs, other than rent, by 35%. So the question is, what is the effect of this new product on the firm's operating profit? So I want you to think about that. Did you have a chance to answer the question? I solved it by using the differential method because I believe that that's easier. So our increase in sales is going to be 30% of the firm's existing sales revenue. That is $3,600. Our increase in operating costs is a little harder to figure out. Remember that our total cost was $9,500, but that included $1,500 that was for rent, which was not expected to change. That means that the portion of the firm's total cost that would vary is $8,000, and we expected it to go up by 35%. So we can figure out our expected change in our operating costs. Now our life's easy. All we have to do is take the expected increase in revenue and subtract the expected increase in costs, and that tells us that we would expect our operating profit to go up 
by $800. So we should do it, right? Well, it depends. It suggests that if our estimates are correct, and if there isn't any other product that might be more profitable for our firm, this could be a useful thing for us to do. However, what we should do if we decide to do it is to keep track of the actual increase in our revenues and the actual increase in our costs so that we can see whether our estimate was a good one. In this way, we can learn to be better estimators.